please stand, my friends. My friends, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and his life. So we pray, Almighty God, sanctify these branches with your blessing. That we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you'll find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it. Bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Simply reply, the master has need of it. He will send it back here at once. So they went off. They found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, why are you doing that, untying that colt? They answered him, just as Jesus had told them to, and permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus, and they put their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, Others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following him kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, let us go now into Jerusalem, as Jesus did, to begin his death and resurrection. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. obviously the longest reading of the year, although the reading from Mark slightly shorter than the others. If you need to sit down so you'll pay better attention for your health, don't be afraid to do that. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at the table of the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. 
She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She's done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good for them, but you will not always have me. She's done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. And then I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, the disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his, of his, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. Then the disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he told him, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. They all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood, the covenant, which will be shed for many. And then I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your fate shaken. It is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I've been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all shall have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Then he took Peter, James, and John and began to be troubled and distressed. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here. Keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found him asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. But they could not keep their eyes open and did not, want to, no, and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, You still sleeping, taking your rest. It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. 
His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you come out as against a robber? Swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth around his body. They seized him. He left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple with my hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too are the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know, know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are Galilean. He began to curse and swear. I do not know this man of who, about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then, Jesus remembered, then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief, pri the chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have, them, to have him release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? 
They shouted again. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews. He kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, He is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us kneel. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he had breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also some women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate asking for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned a centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. 
Well, at least we're in church this year for Holy Week. But what you saw at the beginning of our ceremony tonight is the first time you've seen that in a year. The first time we've had a procession. Now, we've been having a procession from there to here, but that, that ain't much of a procession. Okay, and this week is supposed to be all about processions. Holy Thursday night, normally, we process around the whole church with Eucharist, and it's, it's a just very beautiful ceremony. We won't have that. We'll have a very simple procession. On Good Friday, you process up and kiss the cross. Well, certainly we're not allowed to kiss the cross. That may never come back. I don't know. We'll have to see. And on Holy Saturday, usually the whole crowd goes out to the fire. There will be a few people asked. It's just, it's just different. But at least we had something of a procession. We didn't have the whole crowd singing all glory, loud, and honor, which we normally have. But at least we had something. So just listen to me. I'm going to try to explain some kind of deep here. There's a difference between a procession and a parade. Okay, we go to St. Patrick's Day parade. You notice that the parade begins by the Guild Studio building and it ends just a block away. That's where everybody parks their cars, so it's easy. It just really goes in a circle around Central City. That's a parade. It's not, not that big of a thing. A procession takes you someplace else. Someplace else, and often a place where you have never been. The young lady processes down the aisle, a single girl. After she's married, they process out as a married couple. That's a profound change. That's what a procession is supposed to do. At the beginning of Mass, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. By the time we got to the Gospel, they were yelling, crucify him, crucify him. You did your part well. See how there's a change there? It's not a parade we had, it's a procession. The procession for Holy Week is to take us someplace. Not a different place, but to a deeper place. Not a new place, but a deeper place. A place where we understand more deeply what we mean when we say death and resurrection, the Paschal mystery. What do we mean when we say his death and his resurrection? And why is it important? The good news is that this year, for the first time, we might understand it in a deeper way. Okay, I don't like this stuff. I have resisted for a long time televising these masses. The people on the worship community, the parish council, have tried to twist my arm for years to get more technologically advanced. I don't really like computers. They're largely used for pornography. You know that, I know that. I really resist using them, okay? But the pandemic forced me to let that die. And now we have thousands of people watching. I can't believe it, but I had to let that die so that we could have something better. And I had to let that go. The block party, I held on to the last minute to have the block party, in part because we need the money. Every parish needs the money. But finally got to the point we had to say, we have to let that die. That we're not gonna have a black party. We're not gonna have a black party, is it, really? But could we come up with something better, or something different? And the drive through made just about as much money, maybe more. But I had to let that go. I had to let that die for there to come a resurrection. And that's what this week should be all about, going deeper to understand the death and the resurrection that happens in the life of Jesus and how it impacts me. And if we, if we don't make that procession to a deeper spiritual life, then we're wasting Holy Week, wasting everything. Here's how you do it. You do it by going deeper, asking questions you never asked before. Who was the man who ran away naked? Many scholars think it was the man who wrote the story. Do you notice it was a, a, a colt on which no one had ever ridden? Do you notice at the beginning of the story, Mary is pregnant only with Jesus? and we'll have no other children. Did you ever notice that? Do you notice it's the, the, the men who are supposed to be the big, strong heroes, the apostles, they all ran. They, they were cowards, and Judas betrayed them. Do you notice it was the women, a woman who anointed his body at the beginning of the story? They don't give us her name. We don't know. And it's the women at the end of the story who go to the grave to prepare his body. Do you notice that? You think you know the story. No, you don't. Every time you read it, if you're going to take an hour this week sometime and go a little deeper, go a little deeper, read the story like you've never read it before. They put him in a tomb in which no one had, had ever been put. 
Luke will tell us. No one has ever ridden the horse. No one's ever been buried there. No, Mary has never been pregnant with anyone. You be, boy, that, is that a coincidence? And if you begin to pray this story on a deeper level, you begin to see things you never saw before. If you dare to go deeper and explore what death and resurrection means, that takes time. That may take an hour on Thursday night. I'm not sure if other churches are going to be allowing you to go around and visit. They probably won't, because then they have to purify wherever you sit. That might be a better thing to do. Just read, just read that passion slowly. Look for little things you never saw before. And if you notice the line said, I gave my back to those who beat me, my, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. If, it, if there's a surprise, all the stuff I just told you, there's also a surrender. Jesus doesn't give up. He doesn't give in. He gives away. He gives his life away for us. Those of you who are married know that. You give your life away to the other person. Hmm, I never saw that before. You think you know the story. Well, we know the story. But we can know it on a deeper level. What does death and resurrection mean? And then you look at the deaths and resurrections in your lives. If you dare to swim in deeper water, and this is the week to swim deep. Swim very deep. You know, we sing the song, were you there when they crucified my... Well, we weren't. That was 2,000 years ago. But we can be there now. If we read the story slowly, let it sink in, see the little things I never saw before. And that's where the death and resurrection can happen in your life today. And we can say, yes, I'm still there anytime he is crucified, but I rise with him. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things. response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That all disciples of Christ may work for the good of all the people and shout Hosanna with our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nation, entrusted with the well-being of its citizens, lead with wisdom and good counsel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, peace in our violent world. Peace in the hearts of those who hate and those who are troubled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military, police, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and all those serving in dangerous professions, that the Holy Spirit will guide, direct, and protect them at all times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joseph Merrick, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may live eternally with Christ their Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by saying the vision prayer. Jesus, we are your people. We praise you as Savior and Lord. Deepen our commitment to you, the church, and each other. Let us all share more actively in spreading the good news of God present among us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace 
for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love and service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family, family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, her spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. in yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For Jesus, though innocent, suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Who are indeed holy, O Lord, in the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like to the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sub Brendan took a chalice, once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. Praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. But as you come forward to receive communion, we'll have our usual three stations. We have the tables with the palms situated, so no matter which way you come up, you can take a piece or two of palm, return to your pew, bring up, if you need to get a piece or two to form a cross for a neighbor, a, a shut-in, whatever, we should have plenty to go around. I have no idea what's going to come to church, so we're guessing as best we can. Return to your pew, we'll say the closing prayer, we'll process out, take your pages if you needed them, and take your palm and cleanse your pew as you as I dismiss you.
Let us pray. Nourished with your sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call us, eternal life. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. As always, either through the website or the printed bulletin, be up to date for this week's schedule. We have confessions, as we have had every Monday night at 5.30 on Monday. There will also be confessions Tuesday at 7 for those who can't make Monday night. So we want to have something for those who want something else. And as all the usual things, make sure you go over your times. I won't say them out loud because I might get them wrong or they might just be forgotten. Whatever. We'll have the youth group stations of the cross on Friday night. It won't be the same. Very simplified because of keeping distance. Every, everything this year is, is different, but at least we are here. Maybe next year in Jerusalem. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends. We go in peace glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.